Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking, once again, another look at the tropics today, and a lot of things have changed, actually, so I need to update you guys on those things. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that all these systems will fizzle out eventually, and do you think that we're going to get into a quieter period here in the tropics, or do you think we're just going to take off from here really into the hurricane season let me know what your thoughts are moving forward and i'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video let's get straight into this video and first things first we're taking a look at that two-day graphical tropical weather outlook and for probably the third time in a row here we have nothing here on that two-day graphical tropical weather outlook now as we look at the five-day tropical weather outlook nothing so as you can see all gone uh, nothing there in the Southern Caribbean. But remember, I want you to remember one thing. We do have a system that we've been watching in the Pacific that is expected to possibly cross over Mexico into the Gulf of Mexico. And that all along has been our biggest threat, actually. And as we take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook for the Eastern Pacific, you can see we do have a 40% chance of development just to the south of Mexico there. And the expected track for this is towards Mexico, right towards the Gulf of Mexico. And don't be mistaken, this system will have a lot of trouble making it over Mexico. Uh, it's not easy for these storms to make it over there and stay in one piece over to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, basically, it's only chances if it goes over the thinnest area there of Mexico, which still isn't that thin. Uh, but if it goes over the Yucatan Peninsula, that's a very long track and it would have much more trouble that way. Uh, so the only chance that this storm really has is if it goes over the thinnest area straight into the Gulf and then kind of slows down and has an easier time developing. As you can see, the area that this system is over is very warm compared to normal in the oranges and reds here. So it is going to have an easier time developing than normal here in the Pacific and also in the Gulf where it's expected to go is also above normal sea surface temperatures. So uh, regardless of how you look at it, this storm should have an easier time uh, than what is typical for this time of year, both for the Eastern Pacific and also in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, usually, I would say sometimes we do see Gulf of Mexico systems this time of year, uh, but mostly offshore of the East Coast actually is the most common area, in my opinion, for tropical storms or subtropical storms to develop this time of year. And as we take a look at the seven-day change here, this is just how the sea surface temperatures have changed over the past seven days. You can see that things have actually cooled down a bit there in the Gulf uh, as you can see, especially the central regions, the eastern Pacific, where our storm is located, actually has warmed up quite a bit over the past seven days. The reason this is important is because this shows us kind of where the momentum is. Is it, is it currently warming or is it currently cooling uh, and will it continue to? Because if an area is warming up, there's more chances than not that it is still warming and will continue to warm for at least a little bit. Or if it's colder, that it will continue to cool down. Uh, etc. So I hope that makes sense. So that gives us a little bit of insight into the momentum of the sea surface temperatures and how they are changing. All right. Now what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the Gulf of Mexico on a chart. We've been showing that for the past couple of days. We're going to take a look at the probability of tropical depression and probability of tropical storm. And then also we're going to move on to the European models, uh, cyclonic vorticity, like we've been showing you guys, and then also the GFS models as well. So many st things are still to come in this video that are going to give us a lot of insight into this storm. All right, now here we are taking a look at that chart here for the Gulf of Mexico. And as you can see, things had cooled down around May 26th, but they have significantly warmed up since then. Uh, you know, we're, we're at about uh, 0 0.2 degrees uh, positive at this point. Uh, so we are warmed quite a bit there uh, by this point. Point, and I think things will continue to warm. Usually this time of year, uh, nowadays, uh, over the past five years or so, we've seen uh, that the Atlantic does warm up quite a significant amount as we get closer to the hurricane season. And even during hurricane season, uh, we have seen things cool. Like last year, things got pretty cool uh, during April and May, uh, and they began to warm up as well. So we might be having a similar, um, a similar event taking place at this point uh, this year as well. Now, here is the probability of tropical depression as of the next three days, the 10th through the 13th. And as you can see, uh, basically there is a 10 to 20% chance there in the Southern Caribbean still, uh, but that is hardly anything. Offshore, the East Coast, it still is indicating that area, uh, but I really don't think this is going to be much of anything. 
Uh, I, I really, once the National Hurricane Center wasn't specifying this anymore, I really, you know, kind of lost confidence that that would amount to anything. It still could, I guess, but, you know, the National Hurricane Center isn't really eyeballing anything going on over there. Uh, so I'm not quite sure if it will or not, but I'm not including it in these videos too much anymore because even if it did develop, it's not going to hit land anyway, so the impact would be minimal. But if it does decide to go ahead and uh, develop, I will update you guys on that, obviously. Uh, now we also have a 80 to 90% chance of development south of Mexico there, so that's huge, obviously, because that is our storm there at this point. Uh, so let's just go ahead and see how that's going to change. This is going to be the days 5 through 8, uh, the 15th through the 18th, looking a little bit ahead of time here. And as you can see in the Gulf now, we have a 40 to 50% chance of development. And actually that little yellow dot in there, you can hardly see it in the middle of the Gulf. That is a 50 to 60% chance of development according to this European model. So obviously that's huge because that's crossing over that 50-50 mark and uh, bringing us towards a 50 to 60% chance. Uh, so yeah, the European model feels like this one will move into the Gulf and it has actually some pretty high confidence that we will see this one amount to something there. Uh, so we'll need to wait and see. And actually, as we take a look at the probability of tropical storm as well, this is the 17th through the 20th, we do have a 20 to 30% chance there in the northern gulf with this same system, which is super interesting as well. Obviously, we're going to continue to track this one with you guys, uh, but it does appear there is a decent chance that we will see a tropical system move into the gulf over the next 5 uh, to 10 days. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that vorticity, see where the European model wants to take it and then where the GFS model wants to take it, and then we're going to close out the video. All right, now this is by Saturday morning, uh, June 12th, and as you can see, we have that system crossing over Mexico. You see how it's crossing over the thinnest little region of Mexico? That is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, where that's where it basically needs to go to be hindered the least amount. Okay, because the more it holds together, the easier time it will have once it crosses over. It's not going to have an easy time either way. Crossing over Mexico or Central America is not easy for these storms at all. Even crossing over uh, the Dominican Republic and Haiti isn't easy, even Cuba. Uh, so to cross over Mexico is a lot bigger and that's a lot more challenging for these storms to recover from. By time we're taking a look at about 2 a.m. on Thursday, that's going to be June 17th, you can see that vorticity is located kind of to the northwest of the Yucatan Peninsula. This does eventually get its act back together by the time we're reaching Friday evening, I would say about 6 p.m. That's going to be June 18th. And as you can see, it actually is looking quite intense as it's approaching Texas and Louisiana. Remember, this storm, uh, according to the European model, actually does have a 50 to 60% chance of being tropical storm status. Uh, so this would be a stronger storm according to this model. And as it reaches land, take this with a grain of salt because it can really hit anywhere. This is almost 240 hours out or 10 days. So basically we can't gather any sort of information from this that's going to be, you know, perfectly accurate. Uh, but this does have a stronger system kind of heading in between Texas and Louisiana there on the border. Now the GFS model, it does have a lot of that energy in the Gulf, but it never really gets a storm together uh, quite like the European model does. So there's a big difference there, but they both have that energy crossing into the uh, Gulf of Mexico, basically. So that gives us a chance on both models. And there is some agreement there because of the fact that they both take this into the Gulf of Mexico. Anyway, I'm going to be updating you guys on this. So stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe because we're going to be bringing more videos on this topic. For our confidence tab, we're at a three out of six, and that's going to put us at about a 30 to 40% chance confidence. Uh, I really feel like I still need to see more uh, to believe that this storm is, you know, for sure going to head into the Gulf and for sure going to develop after that. So for now, we're at a three out of six. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that either of those tropical uh, invests or not even invests, tropical disturbances will develop? And Sean Winter said, I think one will develop the one in the Gulf, which is the one we were talking about today. So I thought that was a good comment of the day there by Sean Winters. Anyway, for today's Patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lily Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falegos, Gary's, John Quilisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be part of this 
patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. That will be located next to the subscribe button down below if you're interested in joining that as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.